Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I'm Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is... I'm not going to do that to you twice. Uh, joining me tonight <laughs> is... I, I was wondering because... Rolling brownout. Dan Ryan. <laughs> Co- Apparently. Coincidental power outage, Dan Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, we're well oh, now. Yeah. We're now well into 2024, and you know what that means. Dan and I get to talk about all the games coming out this year that we're excited about. What hopes and dreams of ours will be dashed? Let's buy good games from awful companies because the Stone Age Gamer podcast starts now. Well, hi, everyone. This is episode 498, take two. It's the week of January 19th, 2024. <laughs> I just had a power outage, so we're doing this for a second time. That's right. And weirdly enough, Evan also had a power outage. He lives n- nowhere remotely close to me. No. Uh, so, like, yeah, we lost the, the 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 master recording and my recording. Dan's doing just fine. He's got I'm doing all great. kinds of... Yeah. He's got all kinds of vamping recorded on there. The word oh, thruple so apparently good. came up at one point. I'm so many. To- I said thruple a whole bunch. I, we just, we went into I, the den of honesty is where, where we reside, Chris. There was, there was some, some honest, frank discussion that was had between me and the listeners. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. I really can't. <laughs> How you doing, Chris? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, um, I, as we were saying the last time we tried to start this podcast, I'm a <laughs> little frustrated that I am ago. somehow less healthy than you are. You're re- you've just you're recovered from COVID now, feeling yeah, I'm like good. a champ, and somehow I'm, good, yeah. I'm still sicker than you are. I'm doing better than I have been, but I was out running marathons today, multiple marathons, so many that marathons you wouldn't believe. They're beautiful marathons. Great. <laughs> no, I feel I feel good, man. Like I, I'm I'm recovered from COVID. I, I'm ready to go. I'm not entirely ready to go. I'm still tired. That's the fucking thing. Like uh, we were we were just getting into it before, but now that I can, uh, I, I I'm not focused on like the COVID sickness. I can go back to obsessing about my neck and shoulder uh, issues that I've been having. And I think it's more, um, I think it's more pinpointed in the neck. Honestly, I think there's something like maybe pinched in there or whatever. So now it's just uh, like, I I think I said it last week or maybe the week before or whatever. I haven't fucking slept through the night in weeks, man. And I'm not going to the doctor for my, to get an MRI on this earliest. They could get me in is February 1st, something like that. I'm like, fuck man. It's just all right. I'll just this will be my I mean, life. Who needs to sleep that often, really? I no, mean, no, certainly not for more than an hour or two at a time. No, that's <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. It's, fine. it's totally fine. And like that, the <laughs> the shitty thing is, is that I I have a tendency, um, to when I get into a situation like this of like a, a chronic kind of pain thing or whatever or or something there's there's definitely something fucked up either in my shoulder or my neck like one of those two things is not right um so until i get the answer as to what it is and what's going to be done about it i am uh i i'm i'm just kind of uh like this is just my life now <laughs> like mm-hmm. I've, I've convinced, I, th- I'm just going to feel like this forever, and I, I, it's such a stupid thing. But I've always been like that. You know what I mean? It's like, well, this is this is how my life is now. This is just what it is, and what was me. Um, and I, I, like I'm trying to work on it, but it's real fucking hard when it hurts all the time. You know? It's right? Like, yeah. It's real hard to get past that. So, you know. Ah, it's all right. It's fine. Yeah, it's I'm fine. not. All in this a is fine. Too distantly different situation regarding my teeth. The you know the the I the one sideways tooth that needed to be pulled is just getting worse. Uh, there was a cavity in it, and it's oh, just fun. not 
it's it's hurting more and more as time yeah. goes on and i just have yet to find the literal hours in the day to call my insurance company and figure out if they can figure out where i can go where someplace will take both of my insurances so that they can actually right. remove the teeth and or the tooth and or teeth that need to be removed yeah and also the flyers just got scored on so uh, uh. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just having saying a night, the, uh, Dan. I'm having a night. <laughs> Ryan Family Dentistry. We accept all kinds of insurance. <laughs> you're coming closer. <laughs> One of these days, you're gonna you're gonna show up at my door and be like, "Fucking do it. It's fine." <laughs> I brought Make my it own happen. pliers because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I don't trust your rusty ass shit. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. The dog left yeah. them on the drive over, so, you know, they're nice Oh, so they're sterile. totally clean. Yeah, no, 100%. Totally dog mouth is, like, just one of the cleanest places on the planet. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that. That's right. Everyone's saying it. <laughs> Everybody's fucking saying it. <laughs> God. Is that, are we there? Are we back to, uh, to, to Trumpisms? Are we fucking... Uh... Oh, I don't know, Dan. I don't know. I had a really good day yesterday. Did you? What happened yesterday? Be, uh, yeah, uh, well, I mean, I woke up yesterday, and I was feeling less crappy than I have been for a long time. Uh, so that was good. I went through, I made it through the entire day without getting a migraine. Uh, so that was a, a huge improvement over where I have been for quite some time now. Um, so the sinus infection seems to finally be shuffling off this mortal coil, which brings me no small amount of joy. Uh, we had leftover tacos for dinner. Which, uh, you know, tacos always bring joy, warm fuzzies to my cold pricklies. We sure. Went to a, uh, um, we had a 504 meeting for John uh, at his school, uh, just, you know, talking to yeah. him about the, uh, the, the, the general status of his various things that ne he needs help with on a daily basis. And he's doing great. Uh, That's he doesn't awesome. Even need some of the things that have been all allotted for him uh, now. It's just a, uh, it was a really, really positive meeting. It was wonderful. That's uh, great. I made a, a lot of progress on the Mario video that I'm hoping against hope I'll have done for Monday. I'm trying real hard. I'm almost done with it. Uh, if I can find time to get it done tomorrow, that's going to be my plan. But uh, I made, made some progress on it, and I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, and there was a really, really exciting game announcement, which we'll get to in a little while. Uh, at least for me personally, just extraordinarily exciting. So... Uh, yeah, yesterday was a really good day. Today uh, seems to seems to be going a little less so. You know, we had that power outage. <laughs> cost me my, today it can go pound sand. Cost me my 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 gambling situation for the evening. Uh, looks like the Flyers are about to blow it here in the third period, which uh, uh, you know that that's I guess that's par for the course. Sometimes they're having a good season. They you know the game better than last year. Fantastic. I didn't watch them last year, but oh, I yeah. tell you, you the, the game you they won much. the other night was fan freaking tastic. Uh, they still got 15 minutes left. They could still get scored on a few more times and just really close that. <laughs> <game>. <laughs> really close out the day on a high note. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I can't. Oh yeah, I still haven't. Uh, nah, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it, we're, we're here. We're doing a podcast. And oh yeah, look at that! They just scored again. <laughs> oh, this game is going right in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like that's too. The Minnesota Wild has just uh, decided to win this game right here in the third period. Oh. I'm real glad I tuned into this. You know what? I'm I'm turning it off, Dan. I'm doing it. You know, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm not pushing my luck anymore this evening. I'm just I... gonna go ahead, move on with my day. I'm not even gonna background watch it. No, you shouldn't. You no. shouldn't. I got to be honest. I think the Minnesota Wild is like top five worst sports names in in the in sports. I, I don't know if I'm going to limit it to just the United States. Minnesota Wild is such a shit name. You know, I don't disagree with you, but it's uh, shit. as it was pointed out to me earlier today, they have one of the coolest logos. Their logo is just incredibly well designed. Oh sure, no, that's fine. That's that's great. It's a fucking terrible name. Yeah, it's an not absolutely not a great, terrible not name. A great name, but it's not as bad as they changed it in like 2011 to something like really or like late 90s. I think oh, I was just looking this up earlier. 
they changed their name for a little while to something really extreme. <laughs> okay. Uh, where is it? There we go. Minnesota Wild became like the like the Minnesota Pussy Pounders. Like, oh my God, guys, Jesus, that's holy moly. That would be extreme. Uh, now, where did I see this? In preseason, they originally were the North Stars. No, they were something else. Was the North Stars? And they changed their name to this nonsense. Where was the thing I was reading? Changed their Oh, that's going to drive me bananas. I could have sworn it was just on their Wikipedia page. Uh, it's over there with the uh, script. Hopper has that as well. Seriously. Hopper, it's stop stealing Hopper. my shit. <laughs> stop stealing my fucking sports trivia. I, this is such a weird bro moment that we're having right now where you're trying to like tell me about sports. It's great. I am certain, and I I, I, I couldn't possibly be more, more certain about this, that Greg is listening to the show right now just screaming the answer at me. <laughs> Although right now he's probably just beating his head against the wall because the flyers are well shitting the bed all, yeah. <laughs> all over this third period here. <clears throat> I have such a hard time watching hockey. I want to love it more than I do. But I, I just I have a hard time watching it. I don't know. Always have. Always have. I do not. I have a really good time watching hockey. I'm a big fan. I like it. I like if there's a Devils game on, like like I'll sit down. I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm watching the Devils play some hockey. Let's do that hockey. Love it. But the Devils are very uh, infrequently on uh, here in South Jersey, uh, which pisses me off because they are the New Jersey team, you fuckers, not the Flyers. Fucking turncoat bastards. Um, but yeah, like it's just it's very infrequently on, so I don't watch it very often, and uh, and I, I just I have a hard time following. It's too fast. I'm too old, Chris. Hmm. Like in Dragon Ball, when the weaker characters are trying to follow the fights and they can't they can't see yeah. with their eyes. I'm I'm like fucking Krillin, just over on the side, like I'm gonna go bang my hot android wife instead. Never mind. Let's fuck you guys you guys fucking blow the plate up again, you pricks. Be over here having some robot sex. Be great. <laughs> you know what? It wasn't the Minnesota Wild, it was a different team. That's why I'm getting all confused here. There was a different oh, okay. team. That had some sort of different name, I think. Um, oh, now this this is a rabbit hole that I need to I need to figure this out. Let's see. Is it one team? of like the Canadian teams that moved down, like the Quebec Nordiques or something like that? It was the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, which I forgot. Still a team, was even, I forgot they were a team, Aren't they? and then I saw their logo, and I was like, "Oh, right, their logo." Yes, and they are still a team. But for a brief bit, from 1999 to 2011, they became the Atlanta Thrashers. Oh, yeah. I forgot they moved down to Atlanta and then moved back yeah, to Winnipeg. Yeah, 2011 to present, they're back to the Winnipeg Jets, which is a better name than the Thrashers. It which is. Which is super extreme. It is super extreme, but it's still a way better name than Wild. It is. It is indeed. That is just a garbage name. Yeah. It's a garbage name. Ah, uh, that it is. I stand by it. So, what have you been up to, huh? What, have you been playing any video games? Since we're uh, starting yeah. the show so damn late, let's, <laughs> let's move this along here. Barrel on through. Uh, I finished uh, Spider-Man 2 this week. Um, so fucking good, man. The final Venom shit. It, it would just, Oh, my Whoa. God. <laughs> <laughs> he just takes the big... <laughs> Big old dump. <laughs> just drops a deuce right there on the stage, and you got to fight it, because that shit's we, alive. It's alive. He looks at it, too. It's real weird. Like, the camera pulls up real close on his face, and it's like, we are shitting. It's like, oh, this is a weird choice, Insomniac. All right. I'm going to go with it, because the combat's so fun, but, like, it's, it's no great Mighty Pooh, if we're, if we're being if we're being on. No. The, uh, the Venom fight was just fucking insane and and there's Insomniac is playing real uh real fast and loose uh with the comic book continuity 
Um, you know, like the the characters are the they made it work for the Spider-Man game. Spoilers for anybody who hasn't played the game yet. Fast forward a um, few minutes or whatever. Um, and you don't care, Chris. I don't think you do anyway. You're not going to play it. Um, nope. <laughs> but I care you, because you care. As you are fighting Venom, uh, Venom is Harry in uh, in in this universe, not Eddie Brock. Um, because Harry is sick Wait, and he's, he's dying. <laughs> okay, he's Harry, not Harry. Okay. Yeah. Harry Osborne. Um, now I'm just picturing a Harry Venom. <laughs> she's just, yeah, it's weird. It's like gooey hair. It's not great. Um, <laughs> he's taking shits. Ha- angry, angry <laughs> shits. <laughs> gooey, angry, hairy shits. It's a very weird game. Game of the year. Um, no, Harry Osborne is sick. He's dying in the game. And uh, Oscorp finds the fucking symbiote and... They do what they do. He becomes Venom. So you've got all this shit with, like, Peter and Harry going back and forth. And Peter uh, has the suit for a little bit, and Harry gets all pissed off. And, like, they they played that, you know, pretty similarly to how the original Eddie Brock story is of, like, Peter rejecting the symbiote and the symbiote being all butthurt about it and being like, let's go fuck shit up. Um, So that's all kind of in there. But then Peter... As uh, there, there's this really cool bit with uh, Mr. Negative, who's the main villain. Well, one of the main villains in in the first Spider-Man game. Um, you kind of reform him in this one, and you enter like the negative zone or the negative verse or whatever the fuck they call it. Um, as Peter is getting possessed by the symbiote, and Mr. Negative and Miles do you know some fucking mumbo jumbo, whatever, some comic book bullshit. And they uncorrupt the part of Peter that was still attached uh, to the symbiote, you know, inside of him, in his soul or whatever. And Peter becomes anti-Venom. So, like, with the white suit and the whole fucking Mm. thing. Um, Which, again, in the comics was Eddie. Eddie becomes anti-Venom and and now he's Venom again. It's the whole fucking thing. But none of that really matters. So you get all of the venom powers that you had because you get some really fucking cool special attacks and whatever when you're venom you lose those for a little bit only to get them back when you become anti-venom and then uh you whatever suit you put on for the rest of the game you still have those uh those attacks and and, and all so the final fight is just this big epic like chase across multiple levels and multiple locations and you're switching off between Miles and Peter and MJ and like you're sneaking around as MJ and fucking stealing like the big uh symbiote stone that the that it comes down to earth on and then you go over and you got to put it in a fucking the particle collider to try and blow it up and the venom that you're fighting is the venom from the uh the null storyline from like a year or two ago in the comics, he's got big fucking wings and he's flying all around. It's just this wild ass shit that's happening. And it all just controls so well. And it's played so well and it looks gorgeous. And it's so like fucking emotionally investing. And we're sitting there and like me, Tiff and the girls are just playing through this game. Just fucking textbook agog. You know what I mean? Like, just watching this shit happen on screen. You're like, oh my god, like, what a fucking masterpiece of a game this is. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and then after I finished the game, I was like, well, there's still a bunch of shit to go do. I gotta go do all these fucking Mysterio missions. I gotta find all these spider bots. There's still some symbiotes running around that I gotta go fuck up. So I'm still just, like, jumping back into the world, waiting for the DLC to show up. Because there was this other bit earlier in the game where you're fighting alongside Wraith and you're trying to take down this dude who's, like, leading um, these fucking arsonists. He's the the flame keeper. And, uh, like, the whole time, or the keeper of the flame, I forget what they fucking called him. It doesn't, it's it's Carnage. It's Cletus Cassidy. The whole time I'm looking at him, I'm like, this motherfucker has red hair. Like, th- this fucking car. I don't know why we're doing it this way. I, I guess we don't want to, like, do the burning down of the orphanage story in the video game. But, like, it's a dude with red hair. He's obsessed with fire. Like, this is eventually going to be Carnage. And there, there's a bit where you're, you're fighting and you fucking derail a train and dude and all of his, uh, uh, like, followers 
grab a piece of the symbiote that was being transported on the train and he just he starts fucking monologuing as as the scene is playing out and he's like you know the world will be devastated there, there will be this there will be that there will be carnage and I was like fuck yes that's awesome I'm so excited give me some just DLC once, with fucking carnage I want him to mess up and say there will be Cletus God damn <laughs> there it. will be Cletus <laughs> fuck yeah that would be awesome but oh man it's just such a good fucking game dude just so so good absolutely loved it could not be happier well that's lovely (coughs) and that's about it that's like that's really all I mean snap and pad and whatever but but as far as like mainstream in the news about snap being in trouble or something like no, they just raised like a hundred million dollars or something like that. They just got some sort of investment. The the Newverse, who I think was the publisher, is in trouble. Like they were selling off a bunch of assets, but Second Dinner, who makes Snap, is uh is totally totally fine. They just raised a bunch of funding. There was there was some Spider Man shit in the news. I don't know. Did you have that pulled for a week old news? About the actress who's playing Mary Jane? No, no, I didn't. Oh, I heard about did, that. Just fucking insane. Like, look, if you have ever thought to yourself, you know, this actress, who's the face model for this character in a video game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call her place of employment. I'm going to find out where she works. I'm going to call her place of employment, and then I'm going to start harassing her and falling down into this fucking conspiracy rabbit hole that video game publishers, uh, Sony being the biggest offenders of these because of the shit that happened with Aloy a couple years ago. Uh, but we're 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 going to make we've made the decision that video game publishers are purposefully casting unattractive people in video games as models so that they lower the standards of traditional gamers so that in the real world their their standards for the women they want to date and or marry and or procreate with are thereby lowered but like whatever the fuck shut the fuck up you <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you like honestly that is some weird ass shit to think. And I know that's like easy for me to say cuz I don't think that way. But like if you legitimately have had that thought of like this is this massive video game company is trying to lower my standards in the real like please go talk to somebody. You are not well. Like in all seriousness, you are not well. Please go seek some professional help. To that is some- end. <laughs> What's the end game of this? Like, I don't uh, know. The, I'm not the people who play sure. Spider Man will now have lower standards for women. So, step three, profit. <laughs> what's, I I what's, don't I I don't know. I didn't understand it. Like, when, if you remember a couple years ago, the whole backlash against Aloy when they were showing off the PS5 model for uh horizon forbidden west they were like this fucking bullshit this she's got facial hair no women don't have facial hair what the fuck is sony trying to do and it's like tell me you've never touched a woman without telling me you have never touched a woman (laughs) holy shit man guess they do they're mammals they're covered in hair (laughs) fuck like that just is what it is like that there's just there's this really insane kind of thing like i don't like bayonetta doesn't exist in the real world she's not no. a person she's also covered she can't in hair. be a person just- <laughs> she also is very hairy <laughs> it's just not you know which not what no they're it's thinking, just, but it was just a really weird upsetting like the- I, I remember that, and I remember the thing going around of like somebody made like a quote unquote pretty version of Aloy that yeah. was like intended as a joke of like yeah this is what they think she should look like, and then 
they glommed onto it as in like, see, this this didn't take long and this is perfect. And like, no, no, no. No, guys, no. you missed you, you swing, missed, you swing missed and a miss. <laughs> swing and a miss, it. boys. Just it's, for real. It, it it's a very odd it reminds me I, I hate being reminded of how much I love video games and how much I hate gamers at times. <laughs> yeah, but like really honestly, it, I hate feeling that way. I really do. But that's the kind of shit where it's <laughs> like, wh why do you got to be like that, man? That's not. And I say men as in men. Like, that's not a woman thing. There's no women who are out there being like this. Fight, that, Sony. Ah, it, it's just I it, it, it really does break my heart because there's there's, there's obviously something missing in their lives. Right. Yeah, like there's, there, there's something, something wrong. Something right? broken. Like something has gone awry. Yeah. And you in need the gamers TM as they are referred to. Yeah. Like you, you need to, you legitimately need to talk to someone. You need some help because that is not a normal, as someone with a degree in fucking psychology, that is not a normal response to have to a fictionalized character. It just isn't, um, and, and, like, and, and it just, it breaks my heart that, that you can't enjoy this this wonderful game, this wonderful piece of art that was created that is so fun and so engaging in all of this because you're focused on this other aspect of it. And what what must have happened to get you to that point just really sucks. And it's real but also don't fucking harass people in real life. Don't yeah, like, that don't fucking do if, that. If your video if the video game character is not hot enough for you, don't don't take that out on anybody. Like, I'm sorry that the video game uh, character is game. not hot enough for you. Yeah, play play a different game. There's plenty of games out there with attractive women in them. But really, uh, the, if, if yeah. this is where your life is, where the video game woman is not hot enough for me, and like, I, I've seen pictures of the in-game character. She's not ugly. No. Um, I'm just the I'm, the, I'm the biggest by it. The thing the thing that really like set me back was that the the argument was um, because there's always got to be like no 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 we're not actually fucking monsters when we say this. What what we actually and Star Wars fans pull this shit online all the time, and it's just the internet is a terrible place. Um, but the argument that was made was that well, in in continuity, Mary Jane Watson is a supermodel. That's her profession. That like in the comic books, what was valuable about Mary Jane was that she was pretty. That was it originally, and. To be fair, originally, fair. that was what Mary Jane was. Face it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. Like, that mm -hmm. That was it. Her whole character was that she was hot. The actress that is playing Mary Jane in the games is not traditionally what you would think of as supermodel hot. However, in the games, Mary Jane... Is not a fucking supermodel. I'm pretty sure She's, Peter wasn't anti Venom in the comics either. He definitely wasn't. Harry was not the first Venom. Like it, none of this it's is accurate. Almost like this is a different continuity. <laughs> it's a very different continuity. Craven's very different in this. Like all of this is Carnage. His orphanage burned down or he burned it down. I forget which of the two that it is. I think he burned it down, um, which is so much more fucked up. But like, it's just, it's different. It's okay that it's different. I just, I feel bad. I feel bad that somebody has to go through their life being harassed uh, by a bunch of dudes calling you and being like, guess what? We've all decided you're not hot. <laughs> That's a fucked up thing to do to somebody, man. It's not okay. Wasn't there a similar thing with the the latest Ninja Turtles movie too, with April O'Neil? Was uh, she was portrayed as as a a thicker 
black woman and people yeah. were pretty upset about that. Oh, yeah, very upset because she was not this curvaceously hourglass, uh, tight yellow jumpsuit. Like, it's a different fucking continuity, guys. It's it's different. It's okay. Donatello's wearing fucking glasses, man. <laughs> like, also, it's not real. It's very strange. <laughs> I, it's just, it's very strange. I, it, it hurts me. It does. You know, because again, it's stuff like that too of like, I love fucking, I love comic books. I hate fucking comic book kids. You know, <laughs> like I've had this argument with people plenty of like, oh, they fucking made this character ugly now on purpose. Like, no, they didn't. Shut up. <laughs> fucking, if you want to just read Greg Land artwork where he traces porn, I'm not judging you for that. That's totally fine. But there's you don't also then porn get, all over the internet. Like, yeah, there is porn. There's lot. There's plenty of it. I'm watching it right now. I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just always on. I just have it in a fucking loop in the background. Um, it's uh, man. I don't know. It's it was a weird thing. It was a sad thing to see. Like as I'm experiencing this game with my family, and we're having such a good time. I, the kids are yelling and shouting and asking me questions about like spider-man continuity and like oh why is vulture doing this and what's up with lizard and craven and this and that and like i gave the kids the craven's last hunt graphic novel of like this is the fucking best craven story ever written you got to read it and they read it they're like yeah it's fucking awesome like we're having this great family moment and like really getting into spider-man and the characters and the mythos and all of that and then on the to then in the same week be like, oh, this is what people are. This is a response uh, to to the point where the at, where the woman had to put out a statement of like, hey, knock it the fuck off. Like, ah, oh, man, <laughs> this is a weird two things to feel about this game that I'm really enjoying at the same time. So there you go. Week old news. So, well, I haven't talked about what I've been playing yet, and I've got some. Oh, I've right. got some news. What do you got? Well, first, I've been playing Vampire Survivors. That's not news. Uh, Naturally. Just just really enjoying my time. I'm getting getting ever closer to 100% completion again, uh, this time on the Switch. So, that's all been super fun. Uh, the Flyers tied it back up, by the way. Uh, oh, son I'm of glutton, a bitch. Glutton for punishment, turned it back on, and they scored twice. <laughs> of course now you did. Tied, now it's tied 3-3 with five and a half minutes left. Uh, <laughs> but the... the <sighs> my daily data streak is gone. Oh, I know. I know what it is. Happened I'm so was, sorry. What I've pieced together is Karen's been playing a lot of the Suica game, and she plays it in the mornings. And a couple of days ago, I was really rushed. I've been working. I've been working extra hard this week and not feeling well, so I've been trying to like catch up on all of the stuff I've been missing because I've been working so much slower yeah. lately. Yeah. And I was in a hurry, and the only thing I can think of is that I played the level on her account instead of mine. Um, okay. Because I went to go play it the other day, and my streak was gone. So You I just turned, turned it off. on and played it, and we're like, oh, fuck. Okay. Like, yeah, I turned it off. I, I turned it on. I did the level for the day, and my streak was gone. It's like, what? What? What happened? Yeah. What happened? This, no. It was like 350 some odd days into this. No. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Yeah. Um. So I I turned off parental controls. I flipped the date back one day just to see if I could fix it. And, right. you know, streak remained gone. So it's like, all right, well, what do I do? Do I just deal with this? No, because every time I turn on the game now, every time I play a level, I'm going to be really mad when it's just like three day streak. All right. Yeah, that's enough to make you not play anymore. <laughs> well, that was enough to make a normal person not play anymore. I went the opposite direction. I was like, all right. If I play one month's worth of levels every day, I should be able to catch back up by the end of the month. <laughs> so I started trying to piece that together. I went through all of the, starting with, I think, February 8th was the day it came out, or 10th or whatever. Started yeah. on the day it came out. I played through February, and then I did a test. I was like, all right, if I switch the date back to current so it doesn't mess with any of my other save files, then switch the date back to March 1st, will it work? And it did. So the next day I went to do March 1st and it reset again. It's like, I must've done something wrong. So I went back and did all of February again. I did all of March and it's like, all right, I'm going to do April today. This morning I went to go do April. The streak was gone again. It's like, fuck it. That's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. done. 
I'm not. I'm, I'm just going to live with it. I'm going to keep playing it every day because I can't not. I have sure. to see what the, all the silly conversations are. Today's was about beans. It was hilarious. But <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, I, I'm so angry about it. I'm so sad. Like, it was some How could you not mistake. be? I just wanted to get to that 365 day streak. That's all I wanted of to course. do. I wanted to take a picture of that screenshot that says 365 day streak and just just frame it or something. I just wanted it for the rest of my life, but I'm never going to have it now. Unless I play it every day again next year, which I'm just not going to do. And I'm I really mean, sad about that. But you might though. I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not. I was already starting to feel like the fatigue of it. Like I really like this yeah. game, but I don't love I really like Daddish. Like, I love Daddish 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. I just like Daily Daddish because I like the concept of it, but the problem is that it's a speedrunning game. Like, in order to get the star, you right. have to do it as fast as possible. And that's way less fun to me than just doing the levels at a leisurely pace and trying to find the star and, like, taking my time to figure out the way to get through the levels. That's just way yeah. less fun to me. So. <clears throat> I'm definitely not doing this again. It was a really fun experiment. I'm going to play the rest of the days, and I want to. I want to see what the leap year uh, the leap year level is too, because they they have one made for February 29th. Um, and then I'm then I'm done. Then I'm I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, the when uh, the next Daddish game comes out, it will be more like the previous ones, and I won't have to worry about speed running it because yeah. that's just so much less fun to me. But it was a really really interesting experiment. I'm just so utterly gutted that my streak is gone yeah that Very really sad. really <laughs> fucking sucks like really i know how I, sales. I know how i feel if like i miss a day on like one of my alternate pad accounts that all i do i don't play any levels on it i just log in you know like i know how i feel if i miss a day on that and it's like, oh, it resets it back to instead of seven days, because you get bonuses up to like seven days, and then the seventh day, it just kind of stays the same or whatever. Um, It's like, man, it says six now instead of seven. That sucks. It'll say seven tomorrow, but, but right now it says six, and I'm upset. <laughs> so missing that many, like dropping all of that shit, that sucks. Yeah, that's just a... Uh, it's not what you want. Really upsetting thing to happen this week, but what are you going to do? Me, I'm just going to move on with my life. I'm, uh, that's right. I think that's all I've played this week. I've kind of... I, I haven't really dove back into New Super Mario Brothers. So I've kind of taken a backseat on, on that because all of my extra time has been spent towards uh, working on my Mario my second Mario video, which is going really yeah. well. All I have left to do now is put together Super Mario Brothers 2. I've gone through everything from Mario 1 through, like, the Game & Watch, Super Mario Brothers Special, the Japanese Mario 2, um, the history of the, a uh, brief history of the Yume Kojo Festival that led to Doki Doki Panic, and now I'm on Super Mario Brothers 2 proper. All I gotta do is edit, edit that, find footage for that, and uh, then the video is done. I'm gonna rewatch it and tweak things and make sure the proper image credits are up and yeah and then i'm good and i'm good to go so i guess it's time for week old news let's all right let's do it let's do week old news thing number one coming to us from the great site of destructoid uh but also announced various other places online golden sun one and two are coming to nintendo switch online on january 17th that is so exciting so very yeah. very exciting a lot of people are pretty jazzed about that. Um, As well they should be. It. I yeah, have not for sure. played these games, and I was really considering jumping into a different RPG. Um, you know, now that I, I, I did Sea of Stars, I did Mario RPG, and I'm just yeah. kind of enjoying that vibe lately. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm was was thinking about doing Earthbound actually, and uh, maybe I'll do this instead. And really, again, depending on what else is happening um, yeah. in the world, because any number of other things could be happening. Uh, by that I, point, just... any number of other games could be dropping, or I could get something else for review. Who the heck knows? They're so good. They're just such well-made games with great stories, and, and they're, just, they're just really fucking solid games. 
They like, look are they the so best cool. RPGs ever made? They're not the best RPGs ever made. They're not. But are they in the upper echelon? For sure they are. They're just yeah. outstanding. Do they have that, that heart, that soul, that they do. spirit, that fun, they do. fun factor that I love so so very, very much? Out of that RPGs, je ne sais quoi? That's, that's all I want. Yeah. The je ne sais quoi. Yeah. No. Great games. If you are listening to this um, and you have not played those games, I would argue that they are worth the price of Nintendo Switch Online just to play through them like, and then you can cancel it. <laughs> They're that good. That's high praise. All right. Also coming from the great <laughs> world of Destructoid. <laughs> nice to be alive. Um, I cannot believe that this is a real thing, but here it is. Beige is back with the Atari 400 Mini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, um, that is a choice. There's an audience for this, right? There's, um, you know, the sure. Atari PC loving crowd has been very vocal about the lack of, uh, you know, Atari 400 and 800 stuff, uh, in things like Atari yeah. 50 and whatnot. They've been pretty, pretty vocal about their want for this to exist for quite a while. Uh, so this is some really impressive fan service from Atari. I'm vaguely yeah, interested I mean, in it just because of the sheer absurdity of it. Um, yeah. But also, um, what's really neat to me is in the ad, which is a, a, just a phenomenal uh, video, um, mini uh, let's see, it includes 25 retro ga games, miniaturized classic console, authentic iconic design, fun for all ages, <laughs> HD TV output, joystick included... Uh, where's the one that I'm looking for? It says, uh... Plus, load your own games. It's got a USB well, on the front. what does that mean? Compatible with... Uh, basically, they're just telling you, this can play your ROMs. <laughs> because it says, All right, compatible well. with Atari 800, XL Xe, and 5200. So basically, if you have ROMs, load them up. Except they're not actually saying that. They're just saying they're saying that without saying that to any illegal uh, form. Uh, this is um, from the same company who did the Commodore sixty four Mini, which was apparently very well received. So um, this is kind of awesome. <laughs> it's it's yeah, that's kind of uh, cool. Um, a real surprise. I don't know who it's for. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, like, it's, I don't... it's definitely not for me, because I didn't grow up on Atari computers, but there's folks who did, and this is definitely for them. And that's fantastic. I mean, you just... Are you, are you going to sell enough of them? To, I mean, I guess... I don't know shit about shit, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I do. have to that's imagine that they'll sell enough of them. I mean, between... Between the existing Atari... PC loving crowd and people who right. just buy these things because they're neat. I'm sure this isn't going to be like the ultimate sell a bajillion copies thing, but I'm sure they'll sell enough of them. I feel like they're confident enough. This Commodore 64 Mini did, and the because this company did the C64, they did an A500 Mini, Amiga, they did a VIC 20. Like wow, so That's yeah, wild. I'm sure the Atari 400 will do fine. I'm like. <sighs> It's got the little keyboard. <laughs> it's, it's so precious. It's, just... it's it's a wild looking little thing. Did they announce the price on it? I don't know. I'm not seeing it here. Uh, I'm not seeing it in the. Uh, it's it's available March 28th. So whatever the price. I don't know that the price is in here, but I did hear that it was up on Amazon. Let's see if I can find it. Amazon. Atari 400 Mini. Let's see. Boop, 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 and I don't see it. Whatever. I'm sure it's perfectly right. affordable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because that's that's really <laughs> going to be, um, that's really going to be like the the fucking line in the sand, right? If right. it's a, a a hackable or changeable system that is capable of playing ROMs and all that, and it is able to be hooked up to your television for a relatively affordable price, well, like, that's, yeah, that's kind, kind of an of interesting cool proposition. 
to experience these games. That's that's a that's a neat thing. I don't know. I want to know what the the game list is. I have questions. I really I cannot imagine I am actually going to buy this thing. Like I just I don't have much in the way of disposable income right now, and the little that I do have is going toward things like records. Uh, yeah, buying a micro console I'm never going to touch. Not a high priority. Just to but look I think at it. It's very neat that it exists. <laughs> I do, too. I'm happy it exists. Me, too. Big ol' smile on my face. But nowhere near as smiley as I got from this announcement. I just linked to the IGN article. I found out about this when uh, our good friend Mike Sheridan messaged me with a picture. And I was like, excuse me, is this real? Limited <laughs> run games. Making dreams come true. Uh, is bringing back, for the first time freaking ever... Rocket Knight Adventures is coming to modern platforms, and it's Rocket Knight Adventures Resparked. It's the original Genesis game, it's Genesis sequel, and it's Super NES sequel. I am beyond thrilled about this. It is... I have been begging the universe for Rocket Knight Adventures on modern platforms yeah. since the Wii, and I couldn't be happier. It's coming to Switch and PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Uh, it's not coming to Xbox because uh, reasons. No, but it's they, they asked about it, and uh, Josh Fairhurst from uh, Limited Run was like, "We love because the, there was obviously the Xbox fans jumping up and down on their throats, oh, being like, you guys hate Xbox. It's all a conspiracy. Sony paid you to keep this.' All right, look." Nobody is paying anybody <laughs> to keep Rocket Knight Adventures off of your platform, no. okay? This no. is going to move hundreds of copies at best. <laughs> right? This yeah. is like let's let's fucking pump the brakes on the pretentious bullshit there. Yeah, this is this is not a conspiracy. But no, he was actually really upfront about it. He said we love the Xbox platform, but nobody buys our stuff on Xbox. We uh, can't justify go. making the physical products. Digital stuff apparently does great on Xbox. Physical games, not so much. And that's why they don't do more Xbox games. And, okay, I buy that. Because Xbox is all about game Games Pass. You know, that yeah. they're, they are very in the digital future right now. And yes, physical games exist for Xbox. And they have backwards compatibility and all that jazz. But if people aren't buying the games... There's only so much that uh, you can expect them to do as far as making... They have to be more selective which, which, with which games they put on the platform. I think they well, pointed yeah, out that the uh, Microsoft Persona, has... Yeah. Where is that? I'm actually going to look up that tweet right now while you were saying what you were just saying. Yeah, no, Microsoft has conditioned um, their player base to be digital. Like, that's that's where... Xbox is and like Sony has certainly done that to a point as well but Sony does not have Games Pass right so it, like you're saying it doesn't really it doesn't really push it um, that way which is okay I mean I, I appreciate like honestly that's fucking great to come out and be like yeah so uh, our shit doesn't sell here so we're not doing it you know like that uh, that's great. Well, here's, this is interesting. He just answered my question. I asked, I said, thank you so much for making this happen. Silly question, but do you happen to know why these games have never been re-released until now? It's always struck me as odd that they never wound up on Virtual Console or anything. And he responded, no idea. There were no additional licensing concerns we had to address when releasing it. <laughs> so it, it remains a complete freaking mystery. That's super weird. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Oops. I'm looking for the the Xbox. Um, let's see. All right. So somebody wrote, I noticed that's awesome. Will there be an Xbox release by any chance, digital if not physical? He said, no, on our current Konami releases, we don't have any digital stake. And our physical Xbox releases, even giant games like Persona, don't sell well enough to ever be able to justify an Xbox port. Uh, yeah, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> Yeah, I mean you can't you can't get much uh, much more honest than that. Yeah, I mean just... there's so uh, some people are obviously clapping. As one dude, I've literally bought three physical Xbox releases from Limited Run. I would even buy River City Girls too if you put that back up because I missed it. And it's like, I mean, that's excellent for you, but unfortunately, yeah, but you're, you're not. a dude. Yeah, <laughs> like you're a guy. 
Yeah. Which is a bummer. I do think it's a genuine bummer. Yeah. But... I do, too. Um, Back to the good news, though. So there's just a regular edition that's 35 bucks. That's what I'm getting. Because the regular edition is... It looks nice. It's got a reversible cover that I think looks fantastic. Uh, and uh, there's going to be a new animated intro, which I'm really excited about. That's cool. Uh, and it's got a rewind feature, so I might actually be able to beat these goddamn games finally. <laughs> I, cause I, I, I've never, I've never finished any of them. I've been stuck. I've never gotten past the last boss, I think, in the original Rocket Knight Adventures. And Sparkstar on Genesis and, and Super Nintendo, both those games are just obscenely difficult. Uh, so yeah. I'm really jazzed to play these with the rewind feature. And this isn't one of those games I've played like once or twice and then given up. I have put time into these, especially the original Genesis one, cause it is hands down my favorite game on that platform. I just love that game to death. It's so good. But yeah. I have never been able to beat that final boss. I just can't do it. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, there is a special fancy edition that comes with a poster and a soundtrack and a steelbook case, and that's all pretty neat. Uh, but what I thought was interesting was that the uh, oh the super special is the ultimate edition has design documents, a full size version of the comic that was printed with the Sonic comics a long time ago. There's a a mini version of that comic that's coming with all the standard editions. Uh, a little statuette of Sparkster. It's, it's pretty cute. Um, a mini cartridge display case, which is pretty neat. Uh, That's like, pretty cool. It's, it's wild stuff, but I do not need any of it. <laughs> I don't need yeah. a single thing from any of these special editions, which makes me very happy because I just want to get the regular one. However, there are other things... Uh, coming as well. First off, before I move on to that, I will also say that at the same time, they announced a Felix the Cat collection, which is super yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That, like that is... I think it is the, the NES game and the Game Boy game? Or there's two Game Boy games? I'm honestly not 100% sure. I'm... I'm not super knowledgeable on the realm of Phoenix, Felix the Cat, uh, except that I believe he is originally from New Jersey. He was created in New Jersey. I think so. That sounds right. Uh, so let's see. If I go to Limited Run Games, this is what I, I find particularly interesting. Um, so we're go over here. Well, let me look at stuff that's coming soon. Where do I find the pages for that? Not all distro. I want the new stuff. What's new? Show me all the... All right. Felix the Cat. What's in here? I'll look at the PS4 version, and it should tell me... Uh, what we have in here. This new bundle will include two classic Felix Cat titles, Felix Cat on NES and Felix Cat for Game Boy. So it's just two games. Okay. I don't know. I All heard right. the games are actually pretty good. I never... I don't even think I knew they were Konami games, to be perfectly honest, but... The interesting thing to me is that some of the coolest Rocket Knight stuff that's coming is not uh, in these collections. Uh, so if I click on the Rocket Knight Adventures, just the, the standard edition for Switch, which is what I was looking at, on the suggested things, there is a Sparkster plush, which, oh my god. Yeah, I that thing's really, really cool. This. It's yeah. 30 goddamn dollars. Dude, th those, like, <sighs> limited plushies are super fucking expensive. Like, they, there's, um... Uh, I think the company's called Make Makeship. We've gotten a couple things for uh, for the girls um, off of there of like weird video game characters that would like never get a fucking uh, plushy release like mainstream. And they're like, yeah, we'll make it. Fuck it. <laughs> Why not? If we get enough, we'll do it. And they've gotten enough and we've gotten a couple, but they've been like thirty, thirty five dollars kind of thing. Yeah, and like, how how big is this fella? Does it say? Um, Doesn't matter. He's adorable. He is adorable. Oh, he, oh, he's a foot tall. He's about twelve inches tall. That's that's not a bad that's, size. That's a pretty for... decent size plush. I don't know. I don't yeah. need a thirty dollar Sparkster plush. I really, you definitely really don't, don't. But I mean, the other thing. When have we worried about is... need? Well, <laughs> when there's only so many dollars to go around, and there's also a Rocket Knight Adventures Resparked re 3 LP vinyl soundtrack. Yeah, that's fair. Now, this is what's really holding me up on this one. My favorite soundtrack of the three is Rocket Knight Adventures, which I already have on vinyl that was gifted to me. Right. 
However, I do like the soundtracks to both other versions of Sparkster, and so far, as far as I know, only the Genesis version of Sparkster has ever been released on vinyl, um, and I really did not care for the cover. Uh, okay. This is all three of them. <sighs> At like 60 bucks for the three records, that's that's not a bad deal. It's 20 bucks a disc. No. It's good it's soundtracks. Bad. Uh, the records look pretty cool. They're yellow, uh, blue, and orange. Looks like the cover is just the uh, the Rocket Knight Adventures, you know, just Sparkster on a gold background, similar to the original Genesis box. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, Dan. I don't know what to do with my life. I need to get I... the game. That's thing number one. Like, I yes. 100% $35 for all three Sparkster games on my Switch. You better goddamn believe it. Like, that's yeah. not even a question. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to take estimated ship date July 1st through 31st. Okay, <laughs> I'll wait till July. I've been waiting of 2025 20 most yeah. likely for being honest. Yeah. You know what? I've been waiting long enough. I I'll, I'll wait longer for this. This I don't care if I have to wait till summer. That's fine. As long as I get it, I'll be a happy camper. It's the 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 vinyl soundtrack that's really killing me. Like I yeah. want that. I just don't know that I have 60 bucks to spend on it. When is it going for? Right. It's not coming. It's not going to be available for pre-order for another six days. So I've got time to marinate on it. But oh boy, I want that. You got time to find something to sell for 60 bucks. Yeah, I do. I do. There's a Rocket Knight skate deck and collectible coins and. Yeah, there's all types of shit. There's a lot going on here. It's really cool. I'm like. I'm just thrilled that this is a thing. I'm so happy that this character is finally getting dug out. Uh, they did also, there was a lot of people asking why this isn't including the Xbox 360 and PS3 game. And they were like, this is a Carbon Engine release. Carbon Engine only goes up to the PlayStation 1 generation. Uh, we're never going to be those supporting games, Xbox 360. That, that game's not very good. It's not. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, you not. know. I also think it's currently available. Um it's on, on the uh, the PlayStation Plus. I know that. Yeah, like, I think you can actually just still buy it, so that's also fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a thing you could just do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, whereas these games are pretty difficult to track down. The first one, the Genesis one's not that hard, but both Sparkster releases are not very easy to, to, to track yeah. down, at least not for any reasonable amount of money. So this was just a huge win for me. I, it made my already great day. I was just being even better. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, opposite end of the spectrum, Retro RGB is uh, reporting that Portal 64 has been removed from GitHub. The 64 bit demake of Portal uh, has been yanked off of the interwebs for I mean, copyright claim. Has it, though? Like, I mean, yeah, it's still out there. Like, <laughs> you know, there's no now, question that if you really wanted it, you could track it down. But it's one of those, you know, yeah. just that's like all the Nintendo shame. things. Yeah, it is kind of a shame. It's a, uh, I didn't think that was going to happen. I, this struck me as the kind of thing that they would just be totally fine with. But apparently, uh, they had an issue with it. Either that's that or because they took it down Portal so that Three's they could, coming out. They're, 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 either that or they're taking it down so that they can sell it on Steam, <laughs> which would be fine too. That, yeah, would, that be, would also be fine. That'd be a win-win. Get those There's guys really some money. interesting project, getting Portal up and running on N64. That, that's just yeah. kind of neat. Um, but, yeah. Spent so long wondering if you could. Comes down. Yeah. Didn't stop to think whether or not you should. This here is my favorite story of the week. <laughs> this Destructoid is reporting. There's an AI Mario hologram at CES, and it's cursed. Oh, so Have good. Have you watched this? I have. I love I that am, he just sounds like a fucking mook Italian dude. I like it. He sounds like... I'm... He sounds like what a robot thinks yeah. a mooky Italian dude sounds like. Yeah, like, he's not doing a voice. He's just talking like this. It, it, <laughs> it's so good! And he's standing so there awesome. all stilted. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. I can't even understand what he's saying. It's amazing. Like, it, it's wild because I, a fucking decade plus has gone by since the last time I was in a um, fucking Disney World 
for the uh, for the the uh, or not to, it's not Disney World. Where the fuck is it? Is it Epcot? It doesn't matter. They have this thing that is a uh, an interactive crush thing. So crush from Finding Nemo, and it's just a big fucking movie screen of crush and it interacts with the crowd so i think i'm pretty sure that the way it was done the way it was explained to me is that um you fucking like there's somebody behind looking out at the crowd and as kids are asking crush questions there's somebody back there with a microphone doing a crush voice and be like whoa dude fucking yeah whatever you know like, they did that for us at the the manager conventions uh yeah. that's when i met charles martinet for the first time he was at well i think it was a game crazy convention that we were at and they had a screen and charles martinet was doing mario and we all talked to him and he was making crude jokes and stuff as Mario because we were a bunch of game crazy managers and then yeah. I talked to him afterwards and it was just a fascinating little thing now obviously this is like AI generated like the voice but they couldn't even have taken a sw- like there's no way this wasn't some sort of dreadful mistake like it's not animating <laughs> properly and the voice just sounds like somebody did not toggle the correct voice like it's just a horror show and it's fascinating <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great. It's it's outstanding. I love everything about it. I'm uh, just saying, like they they could have like you could do that. You could have just had a guy back there going, "It's a me, a Mario." Like just fucking, you know. They could have, but then that wouldn't but they be chose not to fancy new AI nonsense. And this is what happens. This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. When you find a stranger in the Alps, that's right. Destructoid yeah, also reporting Twitch wow. cutting 35% of its workforce. Company issues statement. <laughs> what is their statement? We're a bunch of fucks? <laughs> like. Apparently, Twitch some- just isn't profitable. I, who knew? <laughs> like, I, people are making money on Twitch. I know a couple Snap creators are making a couple hundred thousand dollars last year. They fuck like, but. And this, this kind of flies. A little bit, I guess, in the face of what I, what we were talking about earlier. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. It Life is complicated, right? Life is complicated. It's messy. You can be uh, of two minds about certain things and whatever. Um, there was just a thing that came out about Twitch where they, they banned... Uh, not only nudity is banned on Twitch, uh, mm-hmm. but suggestive nudity. So, like... If you're fully clothed, right, and let, let's just say like like what you wear in the summer all the time, Chris, you, you're you're lousy with tube tops in the summer, right? Oh, so definitely. if you were if, if you were streaming on Twitch and you had a tube top on, so you were covered, um, but you put up a black bar in front of it to make it look like you were topless, then you could get banned from Twitch for for even doing that, um, and. Like that, it seems to be that there's a happy medium to work out there to where you can have an adults only section, make your fucking money, like be a profitable company and also like do it responsibly. You know, I don't know. It, it seems strange to me because no, like twi- I, I, I don't, I don't understand how it's profitable. I, d- I don't get it. You and I are massive gamers have been our whole lives how many hours a week do you watch twitch chris zero zero literally zero the only time i put twitch on is when somebody i know personally is streaming something um and even then most of the time i forget to or there are rewards for a game that i am playing like the show does twitch drops snap does twitch drops I will put on a content creator that is sponsored that you get the drops if you have their channel on, but then I will, I will just walk away. Like I don't sit here and watch it. And I know that we're a different generation. Your kids, my kids watch people play video games, but the people who are watching other people play video games also don't have disposable income at the moment. True. True. They will in like 10 years, five years. Fuck, my kids are 14. They'll have sooner than that. But 
when I'm sitting down with my kids and they're budgeting out their fucking minimum wage bullshit job or whatever, which minimum wage is certainly better than it used to be. But still, when we're talking about their budget, are we going to be having the conversation of like, well, here are all the creators that you want to sponsor on Twitch as part of your, you know, McDonald's salary? Probably fucking not. I'm certainly going to try to steer them away from it. Motherfuckers are broke these days, Chris. I don't know if you know about that. I don't know if I you've know. heard about in this economy. Come on now. It's a, it's a right, weird one, thing. One, one final story before we take our break. Uh, it's uh, sad to say the game designer, I'm um, going to ruin this name, Janelle Jacquez uh, has passed away. Um, okay. She was uh, involved in the development of converting stuff like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong to Coleco, uh, ColecoVision, uh, did stuff with Dungeons and Dragons, Dark Tower. Um, she passed away, and unfortunately, uh, her widow is saddled with a metric ton of medical debt because America, and uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's a sad thing. That Rest sucks, man. That yeah. sucks. But with that, we're going to take ourselves a a quick break. When we come back, we are going to talk about things we're excited about in the year 2024. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. Hi everyone, Chris here. Podcast listening is free, but podcast creation is not. That's why the Geekade Patreon exists. In an effort to help us pay the bills, we've got a Patreon page set up where you can gain access to our monthly podcast topic schedule, get early access to many of our shows, and more. If you'd like to help support Geekade and keep these shows running week after week, head over to the Geekade Patreon page, linked in the show notes of this very podcast. We are Safe at Home, the leading dog rescue in the heart of New Jersey. Are you searching for a loyal companion, a dog that will bring love and joy to your home? Look no further than Safe at Home. At Safe at Home, we believe in giving every dog a second chance. We rescue, rehabilitate, and find loving forever homes for dogs in need, right here in the Garden State. Our dogs are ready to make a lasting impact on your life. Each one has a unique story, a wagging tail, and an incredible capacity for love when you adopt from safe at home you're not just gaining a pet you're becoming a part of our family our dedicated team ensures a seamless adoption process providing ongoing support and guidance with new jersey's beautiful parks beaches and trails you and your new furry friend will have endless opportunities for adventures and cherished memories safe at home relies on the support of compassionate individuals like you Your donations and volunteer work enable us to continue saving lives and finding forever homes for these amazing dogs. Join us in creating a safer, happier community for dogs in New Jersey. Together we can make a difference and give every dog the chance to feel safe at home. Visit our website or call us now to learn about how you can be a part of the Safe at Home mission. Safe at Home, because every dog deserves to be loved and protected www.safeathomerescue.org All right, welcome back to the podcast. Um, we're going to talk about 2024, the year we're currently in. Uh, if you're listening to this in the future, in the year 2025, tell us why. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'd love to know. <laughs> we'd love to know how you got here. But, um, unless you're doing research to find out how wrong we are about any sorts of predictions. But I, I just have a list, uh, a running list of things that I'm excited about for this year, which is already a pretty pretty decent uh, uh, amount of stuff, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh I'm I'm excited, Syphil. I'm excited. I'm 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 into this right now, um, and I just realized I have to add the the, the Rocket Knight thing. 
Uh, yeah. So yeah, do you do what, how, how do you want to do this? Do you have stuff picked out that you're uh, excited about, or I mean, I, I will as we're going along. Don't okay. worry about All it. Right. We're good. Well, uh, you know, very me, few I bullshit with the best of us. Very few of the things that I'm excited about have release dates. In fact, only four of them, as far as I know, do. Mm. Uh, so I'll start with the most uh, the most current one, which is actually. What's today? The 12th. So today is the 12th. So January uh, so, 18th. Yeah. January 18th would be Prince yeah. of Persia, the lost crown. And I Which truly, has, truly hope he finds it. I, I, I do too. Like, have you ever lost a crown, Chris? It's fucking terrible. You're like, where is this crown? I, How could I, I have lost it? I've lost a crayon, but I haven't lost That's a close. crown. I imagine that it's, it's, I imagine if you have a crown, it means enough to you to be sad that it's gone. Uh, no, it I've should heard be on your head. things about this game. Um, the demo yeah, just it's dropped. Reviewing, I haven't touched it yet. I haven't played it yet either. It's reviewing very, very well. It looks fucking great. Yes. Fuck a, Ubisoft. To yes, hell and back. See, that's, that's exactly where I'm at. Like, on one hand, I, I oh, like. Fuck. The old prince. I was fascinated by the original Prince of Persia as a kid. Never got into it, but was always fascinated by it. I loved Sands of Time. Liked Warrior Within. Didn't play anyone past that. I rather enjoyed the 360 reboot that went absolutely fucking nowhere. Nowhere. Uh, the movie uh, was outstanding. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal as a Persian man is just about the most on the nose casting you could have possibly had. Couldn't have found the Persian so guy. <laughs> I really feel like that was all they had to do was just make a movie of the Sands of Time. Like they yeah. just had to do that. With, That's all they needed with to a do. Persian actor or at yeah. least somebody who looked not like fucking Jay. Where was the Gamer Gabe bullshit for that? Where were you guys, you fucking keyboard warriors? Where were you when that was coming out? Because he's a white guy. And everyone should be white guys. Jesus is a white guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oh, that's a different podcast. But yes, Prince of Persia: The Lost <laughs> Crown. I am very excited about giving that a try. I hope with all of my heart that I will get to try the demo for that and my next game uh, this weekend. I would like to dedicate some time to that this weekend. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited for it. I have it downloaded upstairs, but it's not Spider Man Two, so I haven't touched it yet. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have another game that I am excited about for January, though. Oh, wait, real quick, that just reminded me. I got oh. back into, I was feeling well enough this last week to play a couple of more races in Horizon Chase 2. And you know what? Oh, right it's still on. fucking great. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, back to you. Uh, do you have any other January games? I do. I have one more January game. Is it Apollo uh, Justice? It is not Apollo Justice. Oh, it is Another okay. Code Recollection, which is actually oh, coming okay. out the, the day after Prince of Persia. Um. I also have the demo downloaded for that. It is my goal for this weekend. Karen is going to be uh, busy this weekend. She's got uh, a craft show she's working tomorrow, and then the Steelers are playing their first um, playoff game. I, I mean, is it the playoffs. It, yeah, is she no? is she really going to watch that though? They're going to get yeah, their fucking. She is. They're going to get the brake speed off of them by the bill. I would be shocked if the Bills <laughs> did not blow their fucking doors off. I, I'm I like sure the Steelers. She feels the same way, but she watches the games Mike, no matter what. <sighs> Mike is Tomlin a is a hell of a coach. Uh, that guy's fucking great. But, man, I, anyway, I would be real surprised. If I were yeah, betting she's money. She's not hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> But she is obliged. She is a Steelers fan. They That's made it fair. into the playoffs. She's going to watch the game. Stranger things have happened. I mean, I'm going to watch it because it's football. So I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Just, you know, so, okay. Yeah, uh, I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm excited this, for this is weekend. not I want to play Prince of Persia. I want to try. I was, yeah, I want to find out if another code is for me. Because I bought Trace yeah. Memory on DS. And I, was, I, I found it to be relatively fascinating. But I never got into it, into it. And yeah, this seems yeah. like it's a version of it that's going to be more playable to me because it is, it is a, it's not just the DS game made for Switch. It's redesigned to be a little bit more, from what I've come to understand, a bit more like controllable. Like the DS game mm -hmm. was very point and click adventure, I think. 
if Trace Memory right. serves me right. I don't know. I'm 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 interested in trying both of these out. So I want to play both those demos this weekend. Talk to me All about right. Justice, Dan. Justice. No, that's not that is not what I am interested in. What I am oh. interested in, uh I, and I don't know why. Uh, cause I haven't been really super excited about a release from this franchise for quite a while. Uh, but I am really interested in, uh, in Tekken 8 coming out on January oh, yeah. 26th. Wow, that's that I, soon. I didn't realize it was yeah. that soon. Yeah. yeah, the fucking bear looks great. <laughs> Kuma looks amazing. Yeah. This, the, this whole game looks crazy. I, yeah, I really I'm, enjoyed I'm very impressed by the visuals. I really enjoyed the time I spent with Tekken 7. Um, that game was just a lot. Tekken's just really fun in general. Um, I've always really, really liked Tekken, but I, I didn't play Tekken 7 until it was on like the PlayStation Plus, and I got super excited because you could get like Bullet Club shit in there. So like my whenever I play like Eddie Gordo's fucking rocking a Bullet Club t-shirt because that's amazing. Um but this one just I don't know something about the the initial trailers and the the reporting on just the absurd story mode that is going to be in here has me uh has me pretty excited about this one. I don't think I excited enough to be like, yeah, $70, no problem. But on sale, for sure I'm excited about it. Yeah, I've never been able to get into second. I I remember really enjoying the original arcade game. I played that yeah. one a bunch um, at the, the arcade where we used to go on vacation. Um, but I never felt like I understood what I was doing. You know, and it, it never sure. felt particularly good. This trailer is amazing. He just asked a, parry to, uh, a panda to marry him. He's got a <laughs> fish. There's some, just, there's some weird about that trailer that I'm just really into. I, I like I, I I have always enjoyed Tekken's existence for just the fact that it has always been willing to take itself seriously while completely taking itself not seriously at all. Like Yeah, I the the fact that Kuma exists is ju- like I, it's just fucking absurd. Yeah, Paul's there's always hair. some just completely <laughs> big absurd head looking motherfucker. And, like, that's the thing. It's great. Tekken it's great. takes its main story, like, super seriously. It's, like, anime nonsense, uh, yeah. super awesome, realistic characters. But they take their joke characters just as seriously. Like, they, they put do. just as much effort into shit like Kuma, you know? <laughs> this is oh, the fuck it. Tekken 3, and it might have been in later ones, too, and, and forgive me if I, I'm not mentioning them, but the training dummy... That you could eventually unlock and play as the yeah, fucking training Yeah, what the heck was that dummy. thing's name? I was such a badass character, though. He was so good. Yeah, but like, I, I, I love it. I got really good with King for a while. I like I'm nowhere near as good with King anymore. But like, I used to be able to do the big chain combos with King and get you in the wrestling hold and fucking power bombs and suplexes and all that shit, and just keep the whole thing going. It was just such a fun game. My cousin and I played just a metric fuck ton of Tekken Three. Like that was our game whenever we were together. We were like, all right, let's go, fucking Tekken Three. It is, and I just. Man, something about this one just really hooked me. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks quite nice. I do wish uh, I wish I was more into it, but I'm also kind of okay with not being. I feel like fighting yeah. games have largely passed me by. Um, I, I'm not super upset by it. I I love watching them. I just don't get as much out of playing them anymore because I don't know. I don't really have anyone to play with locally, and I don't love playing yeah. online. Yeah. Um, nor do I. Nor am I very good at finding the time to do that. So, um, but I, I love that fighting games have been as good as they are. And like Street Fighter Six was great. Uh, I've been really enjoying watching that. Um, watching high level play on Street Fighter Six that I will never, ever, 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 ever be able to touch. Um, and I'm looking forward to watching some uh, tournament level Tekken Eight as well because I think uh, it's a fun looking game. Yeah, it looks fucking dope. All right, uh, in February, what else do I have? Do I have anything? I have uh, Mario vs Donkey Kong, February sixteenth. I am very excited about that. I, I 
I don't know why this is the one that they're going with. I wish that they would have For Mario done... versus Donkey Kong? The, uh, just the uh, Donkey Kong 94 for Game Boy. Yeah. That's the best one. I wish that they would have done that first. This game, I think, probably needs the remake most. Because sure. this is an excellent game that I think really doesn't look or sound particularly great on the Game Boy Advance. Right. Um, but the game itself is is a really, really good... It's a solid follow-up to Mar- uh, Duck Kong 94, which is just a phenomenal game. That's another one that I actually... I finished that last week. I had oh, nice. always been, I'd been forgetting to talk about it on the show for weeks now that I had been uh, playing that... That was a month now, actually. I've been playing it... Uh, just, you know, when I put the kids to bed or put Ellie to bed, I'll sit and play a level or two of Donkey Kong and been at it for quite some time. And I finally finished it the other day. God, that game's got a great final boss. The final boss yeah. in that game is insane. Um, but yeah, Donkey Kong, Mario vs. Donkey Kong Game Boy Advance is not an extremely attractive game. But gameplay wise, it's excellent. And it's, uh, I, I, yeah, this game definitely deserves it. But I do think that the original. Duck Kong 94 is a better game, and I think I would have loved to see that remade yeah. first. Because while that. this game is kind of odd and unattractive in ways, Duck Kong 94 is like, it's not even in color. Like, yeah. Come on. yeah. That game, that, that game absolutely deserves a, a, a nice HD makeover. Um, not that there's anything particularly wrong with playing it on Game Boy, but like, I played that on, uh, Super Game Boy, you know, that because that was the game that launched with the Super Game Boy of like yeah. this is this is what this thing can do and it was super cool. Um and um it was super cool, but they never re-released the Super Game Boy version of that. So like all the right all the 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 help help, you know, and the, the updated <laughs> yeah. music and stuff. That's that stuff's all kind of been lost. So it would be I think it would be super cool to see a proper remake of that game someday, but whatever yeah i actually Uh, have three games that i'm excited about for february oh Oh. uh the the first one is um i don't know i'm I'm very drawn to this game too it's called ultros or ultras yes uh coming out um february 13th uh, it is a Metroidvania-style game. The uh, The description of the game here is you wake up stranded after seemingly crashing your ship on the sarcophagus, a giant space-drifting cosmic uterus holding... <coughs> sorry. Holding an ancient demonic being known as Ultros. Trapped in the eternal loop of a black hole, you will have to explore the sarcophagus and meet its inhabitants to understand the part that you play. Uh, first of all, you have me at Metroidvania. Like, I'm always kind of d- just in general interested in the Metroidvania style game. But then watching the way that this game moves and the way that it looks, it looks like this really trippy, psychedelic, um, Lovecraftian kind of weird fucking setting. I'm super drawn to it. It looks really neat. And it's very colorful. Yeah. It's like, Almost Mardi Gras, but, like, not. But, like, weird. Like, cosmic, yeah. trippy, Lovecraft. But it's those colors. It's a lot of, like, pinks and purples. Yeah. And, and reds and stuff. It's it's a, it's very interesting looking. I haven't heard of this one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I th- this, I think, just looks super fucking cool. I'm really, really hoping that it is... Like, I need something to scratch the fucking Hollow Knight itch that is just... Yeah. Uh, just... Oh God! So I'm uh, I'm I'm excited about this. Um, I'm obviously excited about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, that goes without saying. We don't really need to spend any time talking about that. We all know what it is. The thing I think I'm most excited about in February, though, is a uh, PlayStation Five and PC game coming out February 22nd. That is called Pacific Drive. We talked about it a little bit when we did one of the State of Play reviews. This was that game that looks like a a survival horror or just survival style game where you it's you and your station wagon and you're kind of like driving around right. the fucking yeah. world. Okay, I don't something about this game. This 
this to me is the type of thing that I look at and I'm like, this is so weird and it's such an out there concept that there has to be something like there has to be a really cool deep story here. And I'm, I'm really fucking excited about this one. Hmm. I don't know. It depends on how much crafting I have to do. If there's a lot of fuck, if there's too much <laughs> crafting, I'm not because I'm just not super into that. You know, I just I not because it's not fun or it's not an interesting mechanic. I just don't have time to figure all that shit out. You know what I mean? I, I would just rather like pick up the thing and like, oh, I have a flashlight now. Not like, oh, I fucking made a flashlight. You know, I don't know. I think this looks really fucking cool. I'm really interested in it. Hmm. <coughs> Neato. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, moving on to March. Uh, I have the only thing I have for March is Princess Peach Showtime, March twenty second. I yeah, think the game I mean, looks neat. I think it looks neat. I I'm not going to play it. I, I don't, afraid, I don't I think feel like I kind of have to. You know. In yeah. My no. House. You you definitely do. Like, Ellie's going to be thrilled at its at its existence. I I mean I I'm I'm interested enough to play it. You know, I'll I'll give it a yeah. whirl. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a that's a you style game. Uh, in March, there is a there's a Dan ass game coming out in March. Um, I like I like what Team Ninja does most of the time. I don't play all of their games, but I, <laughs> when I do, I usually like what they make. Uh, this one, Rise of the Ronin. Um, yeah, I like that. This is just for me. I don't even have we to talk- look it up. No, you you don't. We talked about it. The 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 state of play that was in uh, I think September, October, something like that. Um, yeah, it, it, it Samurai's Team Ninja sold, done. Uh, there's another one that's uh just you know all you need to do was say these words, uh, Contra and way forward. Yeah, Contra Operation done. Galuga. I am excited about. So um, what what day is that March? My, it it's is not that, in March. It just says early 2024. I mean, it might be in oh, March, but there's no date for it, this one yet. Okay. I don't believe there is one. There isn't one listed on Nintendo's website. Um, yeah, it's coming out for everything, and there doesn't appear to be a release date on the official site either. Yeah, so that's not early this year. I, I don't care when. Give it to me. It doesn't. It doesn't much matter. Yeah, I'm into it. It doesn't. I really want it to be good. I love love Contra Four. I did not care for Spider Sores. So we're yeah. a little fifty fifty shot here. I feel confident that they're going to put their best foot forward here. Uh, it looks. I think it looks like a blast. I can't. I wish that I had people to play four player with because that just sounds like yeah. a ball. But uh, it does. Either way, I'm so glad to see a Contra game coming out that looks good because man. Contra Rogue Core was very disappointing to me. I did not yeah. like that game at all. At all. Yeah. Big fat hairy thumbs down. No, was not uh was not great. Was not great. What you got? I mean, I'm nothing sure else I have has it. nothing else I have has dates, by the way. This is all just things. All right. Well, uh in April, uh one of the games that they showed off at the uh the game awards that I got pretty excited about was that uh Tales of Kenzera Zhao um which is the uh the the Bantu myth uh Metroidvania coming out. I thought that looked really really fucking cool. Um that was the one uh we talked about I think like when we watched the uh the trailer the first time. I was like this feels very uh very black panthery without being right. a black yeah. panther game um but again metroidvania really cool looking graphics really cool looking like set locations um i really cool looking boss fights this this game just looked uh really really awesome this is playstation 5 uh series series and switch and pc so that's april 23rd uh which is pretty fucking dope and then, did I have anything past that? Uh, no, nothing, nothing else that had a that had a date. So now I got to look back through the uh, through the non dated shit. Um, what else you got? Well, uh, another non dated game that I am extremely excited about would be uh, Plucky Squire. 
Oh, yes. That looks really, really cool. Yeah, this has been on our list for a long time now. Uh, I think it was it really has. in 2022. It really has. few years. Um, yeah. But I believe it is uh, definitely... I believe the plan is for it to be coming out this year. I guess we will see. Uh, but I do think it looks like a very interesting game. I am looking forward to... Uh, looking forward to giving it a go. For sure. that It, it looks... The Eeny Weeny Teeny Super Guy. That's fucking what it reminds me of. I'm really <laughs> stoked on that one, too. That looks fucking cool. Um, I'm also really <laughs> excited. Again, not a game that I'm going to pay uh, full price for, certainly, but that uh, that Baby Steps game that's coming out for PlayStation. <laughs> uh, that is my kind of stupid, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty fucking excited about that. I'm oh, you know excited. what I'm... I, I missed one. I missed a game with a Call release date. Call of Duty date. Warzone mobile? No. Coming to Switch oh. in 2023, Hatch Tales. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> game looks really cool. It is still on the official website, coming to Fuck Nintendo Switch in 2023, you bastard. It's coming March 28th, 2024, in theory. In theory. Allow me yeah. to hold my breath. Um <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna get it because I already paid for the damn thing. Sure, and I'm just, and you, just I'm just and gonna you're gonna hate love it. it. Gonna, it's gonna be your favorite game ever. It's really not. It, will that make it that much worse? Like if you do end up loving it, you're like, it's I just played really fucking the game. Good. I know what I know what the game is. You know, they didn't change the core mechanics. They just changed its personality, and the core mechanics are decent. It's an Atui game. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's all fine. right. Except now I'm using I, a no. fucking generic ass grappling hook. Yeah. Generic Whatever. ass bitch. The game. <laughs> generic ass bitch. The game. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one out there. Metroid Prime Four. I feel like we're at least gonna hear about it this year. I don't know that Man, it's I coming out so. this year, but I think we're gonna hear something about it, and that's I am excited to learn more about Metroid Prime Four. Yeah, that right? I certainly hope so, man. Um, I am kind of excited. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know that I'm going to get it or play it. Um, but I am kind of excited about the Foam Stars. Okay. The the Splatoon ripoff. Yeah. I don't know. Splatoon's really fun. And like, if this is something I can play with my kids, you know, kind of into it. Yeah, it looks neat. Yeah, it looks fine. Looks fun cool. Concept. Good yeah. times. Uh, you know what? While I'm while I'm out on this limb for Metroid Prime Four, while I'm flailing out <laughs> here on this limb, I'm gonna go ahead and say Silk Song. No, oh, fuck you! Don't say you that what? shit no, out here's, loud. Here's what I, here's what I'm excited for. I'm excited for another vague non-announcement about Silk Song. I'm just excited to hear it's still in development. <laughs> yeah. Oh god! Because it's not like they've been dead silent. They've just been like it's coming. I mean, they might as well have. Yeah, they might as well have. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I am excited Someday. for uh, for Little Nightmares three. Uh, mostly because I play that with Pen. Uh, we played through the first two Little Nightmares games, not all the way through them, but like you know that was that was one of the first games when she started becoming, like, self-aware as a gamer and, like, ooh, I really like this, but also, Dad, can you help me get past this part? Um, so, like, I'm kind of excited to see where, where The Little Nightmares 3 goes. They are really fucking cool games. Like, I know they're not for you at all, but they are really well made and really well done. Um, so I'm pretty pretty stoked that there's a new one coming out. Yeah. Not for you. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember which one that is. I always get that what? name mixed up with a uh, was it Touch Detector for some reason. That's that the imagery for Touch Detector <laughs> it's very, very, comes different. In my head. very different. <laughs> very, very different. Very different. Very different. Not the same game at all. Uh the next one I'm gonna mention is Cash Cow DX. Okay. I don't know no what it's idea coming what that to. Is. Uh, this is from, I believe, the same developer. It's definitely from the same artist, uh, but it, I believe it is from the same developer as well as uh, Donut Dodo. Oh, okay. Right it on. It looks fantastic. It looks 
like Donut Dodo, like it has a very similar visual style and animation. Uh, it's a little bit more, I want to say it's a little bit flashier. Um, yeah. Honestly, I don't care. I just, I don't, I don't even care. <laughs> you just, this company has my money for life now. I uh, just, yeah. Oh, look at that. It has, it does have a release date. February 16th uh, is its planned right. release date. That's exciting. I don't know if that's, I don't know how real that is, but, um, and I also don't know what platforms it's coming for, coming for besides Steam. But I would like to, ex- I would like to think that it's going to find its way to Switch. I assume it will. One um, would imagine. One would imagine. It just looks fucking great. Your cow collecting cat. It's the holy cow. It's all about the moony. Run, jump, <laughs> and slide in this God. utterly jolly adventure to save your <clears throat> fortunes from the greedy pig pockets. Tough as nails and no continues. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I am so very sold. Yeah. How could you not be? Yeah. All right. All right well, we next up for me uh, is another game um, that I'm excited to play through with the kids because they were excited about it. Uh, we talked about it. It was on a Nintendo Direct, uh, that, and that is uh, Penny's Big Breakaway. The oh, Sonic yeah. Mania team. Yeah, the, uh, doing the main character. IP in 3D. Yeah, 3D, the fucking collectathon bullshit, but it it looks super charming and and really cool and the main character is has the same name as my daughter, so obviously she was super excited about it. Um, but it does look genuinely pretty fun. Like I enjoy fucking shit up with a yo-yo. Like don't threaten me with a good time. That sounds fun. It looks really cool. And both of my kids were excited to play it. Katie is excited whenever anything has anything to do with Sonic. It's like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm in. They made Sonic games? Sweet. I like this one, too. <laughs> so that'll be something we play as a family. Uh, breaking news here. Uh, Hopper is being adorable. No. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> he's doing the thing where he's just he's trying to cover his eyes. He's doing a lot of licking right now. I think he's dreaming about eating, perhaps. Difficult to say. He's definitely but, uh, your dog. Yeah. <laughs> Closes his eyes, just sees fucking milk bones, dads. Oh, like, fuck God. yeah. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see what's next on my list. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm pretty excited about Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door. Um, sure. I also had designs on perhaps moving on to finally playing through the original Paper Mario, though A Thousand Year Door is the one that everyone says is the best. Right. Um, but you're you, know. and if you're going to do I'm, it, you're going to do them in order. Exactly, and yeah. I would like to give the I would like to give this series a serious shot. I really enjoyed replaying Mario RPG. That was no surprise. Um, yeah, and this does seem to be the heir apparent, seeing as Paper Mario was originally called Mario RPG too. So, um, I've I've tried to get into Mario and Luigi a couple of times now, and I really I like. The music, I like the visuals. I don't know what's holding me back from playing through that game. I really don't. There's yeah, just something about it that I keep getting stuck. As in, I just uh, I don't know. I'll play it. I just it's not exciting me, and yeah. I really can't put my finger on what it is. And I feel like it should be. It ticks all the boxes, but it won't stick with me. So I'm gonna I want to give Paper Mario a serious shot. Maybe that'll stick with me. But Thousand Year Door looks nice. Um, uh, I'm I'm excited. Does. It's excited to give that a go in theory sometime this year. I am considering um, getting an Xbox. Uh, we've talked about for the Kojima game, um, which is an or Kojima, fucking whatever. Um, but I am also really excited for Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. That game just looks absolutely fucking incredible. I mean, I will one. agree with you. And visually speaking, it looks incredible. Yeah, I don't. I, it, I'm not sure I, I understand it, but it's like it's a game about mental illness, right? It is. Yeah, there's there's it, there's a lot going on. The first game was very deep, very affecting, um, but very respectful. Like it wasn't just done for like gags and and you know like scares and whatever. Mm. Um, this one looks just so much more uh effective because it, it just looks so much better and there's just there's a lot going on here and i know that there there's been some rumors 
uh, word around the campfire of Xbox looking to uh, loosen their uh, exclusivity on things and start publishing for uh, all the other systems. So, you know, obviously, if this, if I don't have to buy an Xbox to play this game, um, I, w- I would be certainly very excited about that. But this is a game that, that looks, I think, that good. I zoned out for a second. Which game was that? <laughs> Senua's Saga Hellblade Senua's Two. Saga. We're still talking about yeah. Senua's Saga. Sorry, I just lost track of Odd reality side. for a second there. It's, it's getting good. late. It's getting late. That's I'm back right. in. Yeah. I understand. I, yeah. I remember <laughs> seeing the first one. I remember. Did you ever see the first one running on Switch? No. It's fucking crazy. It's one of yeah. those games that you look at and be kind of like the kind of like Doom, where you just look at it and say, "All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you fucks, how'd you do how'd this? You do that? <laughs> yeah, I because I remember seeing the the first Hellblade: Senua's Saga running on Switch and being like, "No, no, no, stop no. it! That doesn't that, stop that it. doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem correct." But here we are. Uh, I'm going to move on to something very different and say that I am excited to try Luigi's Mansion 2 because I yeah. love the original Luigi's Mansion. I love the third Luigi's Mansion and I've never played the second one because it was on 3DS and I just <laughs> didn't feel like it. Just I didn't want to. I just didn't want to play through the game on 3DS and so I didn't. And uh, I'm kind of jazzed about it. I like yeah. Luigi's Mansion games. They're pretty good. I, heard I think it looks really too. cool. Another mm-hmm. one my uh, my kids are very excited about. Well, there we go. Yeah. I am very excited, uh, if it ends up coming out this year, for the Silent Hill 2 remake. Oh. That game, so fucking good. And it is... I gotta say, that one makes me, uh... That one makes me a little nervous. Why? Silent Hill 2. Now, I am not a master of the silent hill franchise but i do no. know a decent amount about silent hill 2 and i do know yeah. that subsequent silent hill games have really missed the point of say yes. pyramid head um yeah you know this is a this is a thing that was tied to silent hill 2's character and then they've kind of turned it into a mascot of sorts um yeah. but i do understand a lot of what makes silent hill 2 in specific such a beloved game so when you take something like Silent Hill 2 and you yeah. remake it. You better not fuck it up. You better not fuck it up. And I can't say that I trust Konami a whole <laughs> lot. Well, it's a similar yeah. situation with that Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. Like, okay. But. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I, I hadn't mentioned that one yet because I do think out of everything we know. That is my early contender for game of the year. Like in the way that we we sit here and we pontificate upon what could possibly be our games of the year based on what we know here in January. If they nail the Snake Eater remake, uh, that is my favorite Metal Gear Solid game, hands down. It's not even close. That game I think is is just fucking brilliant. It's the bee's knees. I, it, it is it is the Badger's ascot. Even I will go that far. Oh, <laughs> whoa! Pulling out the right, big I, guns yeah. here. That's yeah, and I fucking mean it. I, Going all no Vulcan bullshit. Raven on us here. <laughs> no bullshit here. I am I am so nervous about that game. Like Silent Hill Two, I'm really excited about. If they fuck it up, I, uh, okay. Like, I won't be heartbroken. I like Silent Hill 2 a lot. Metal Gear Solid 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. I I need that game to be great. I need it to be great. And they don't need to do much. That's really another one of those games where, like, you just make it prettier. Kind of streamline some of the bullshit a little bit. You That's could, what, because but you know they're not gonna. Like, oh, the reason this exists is because Konami saw the success that Capcom has been having remaking their Resident Evil games. And I'm pretty and sure they're going to they've done a really good job like, of them. Well, we can, we can do that. Yes, but can you do a really good job of it? Well, mm. 
<laughs> We're gonna find we can out. Certainly remake our old horror games, but Metal Gear Solid, like without without Hideo Kojima in the involved. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. I'm really excited. But I'm really nervous about it. That game's fucking but damn near perfect. It's a damn near perfect game. So you've said, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about all these games I want to play, and I'm like, all right, I'm getting the Metal Gear collection pretty soon, and uh, that's a lot of games. <laughs> I know I'm yeah. definitely replaying the first one. I don't know if I'm playing all yeah. three of them. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not playing anything this year but three Metal Gear games. Who knows? <laughs> because I tell that, you, I would like to, I would like to there finish are worse Metal ways Gear to spend 3. a year. That's there are true. worse ways to spend a year. It's got I, it's got the best ending sequence, um, in damn near any video game that there ever has been. That final fight with the boss is just stunning. Oh my god, I love it so much. I love it so much. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm like I'm very Jesse Spano about it. Oh, so excited, boy. so scared. It's a reference for our older listeners. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go in a uh, um, a much lower stakes direction here and say that I'm pretty excited about, I don't know how you say this, Quomp? Q- <laughs> yeah. Q-O-M-P? Quomp yeah. 2? Yeah. I, I've never played the first one, and I, I think I'd like to. I didn't really know it existed, and I, I, I was vaguely aware of its existence. I didn't realize that it was like what if Pong had a story? Or, like, what if there was more to Pong or something? I think Quomp 2 looks really cool. Very interesting. It does. Um, and and I, I disagree. I think it is very similar to Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> very Visually similar. in particular. Almost um, 100%. identical. 100%. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, I think Quomp 2 looks super, super neat. Um, I'm going to give that a go when that happens and hopefully quamp one comes out on platforms. Cause it's as far as I know, it's only on steam. Yeah. All right. How many more you got? Cause I'm speaking of steam. I'm running out of it. Um, not too many more. Um, I, I find, I find it odd that I am not at all excited about either star Wars game coming out this year. Yeah. Uh, same here. <laughs> or well, three, cause dark forces remastered comes out too. I just, I just don't care. Uh-huh. And I, I, yeah. I find that very strange. What's um, the other one? Is the Ubisoft one that's like open yeah, Outlaws and Hunters. Oh, and Hunters, Hunters is the Switch one. Right. Yeah, yeah Outlaws is that one the, I see it. They announced the that one, one like two years ago. Like Star Wars yeah. Hunters, it's coming soon. It's a, it's a, it's a, what's it? A, what was popular Switch. a couple years ago? Yeah. Uh, Switch, Battle iOS, Royale. and Android. <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah. that's the platforms for that one. Yeah, I just, I don't know. You missed I, I, the boat, guys. The the yeah, the, the fucking Swing battle royale thing is 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 already gone. So what are you doing? What what are we doing here? Swing and a miss. Um, I am really excited, uh, mostly because my wife is really excited for the casting of Frank Stone, which is uh, the next Supermassive Games. Uh, release that's the kind of choose your own adventure horror games. This is the oh, one okay. that's set in the the Dead by Daylight universe. Uh, I don't give a fuck about that. Um, it's it, it, I just really like their games. I, they they do really good work. The Quarry was really fucking awesome. Like all of the, all of the super massive stuff is just really really cool. Um, they have one that we're down. I can't remember the fucking name of it, but we're gonna play through it this year. We picked it up. It's the one. Uh, that's all about H.H. H. Holmes, um, the devil in the white city, the Chicago World's Fair, like he had the big torture house. I, I'm I'm not super into serial killers. Um, I find them interesting, sure, uh, but not the way like people get obsessed with serial killers, except mm-hmm. for H.H. H. Holmes. That dude, I, fi- I just find fucking fascinating. Um, so, but that, the, the new supermassive thing. Uh, is always going to be super exciting. And then I only have one other one uh, that I'm really excited about. Oh, How okay. many more do you, do you have? have? Um, mm, mm, six. Oh, my God. All right. 
Well, you just rapid fired a, a couple, so I'll rapid fire mine. I yeah. mean, I'll, one of them is super easy. The Rocket Knight Collection. We talked about it there already. We don't need to. We don't need to do that uh, again. Uh, I'm excited to try this game called Animal Well. Have you seen this one? I have not. I forget I look where it up. I heard of this. Um, it's uh, Steam or maybe I have and Switch I don't know. and PlayStation. Uh, I believe it's some sort of Metroidvania that's like animal themed. Okay, again, you throw uh, you throw Metroidvania in there, and I'm like, all right. I mean, yeah, I'll it's it's pretty neat it looking. You're this little like tiny black dot looking thing, and it's got some very interesting pixely graphics with a really interesting uh, just the 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 atmosphere in this is pretty wild. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. That looks kind of cool. Yeah. It was um, geez, when where was this announced? Because it's it's PlayStation, Switch, and Steam, and I can't remember if this yeah. was a indie world thing. I think this might have been an indie world Probably. thing where I, where I found out about this. It looks real interesting. Um, I'm, I'm I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, that looks cool. All right, indie world showcase, and geez, this was back in April. Wow. It said um, on uh, the Nintendo's officially site still has this listed as winter 2023. So uh, I don't know what's going on with this one, but uh. yeah, it's still on my list. World of Goo 2 is another one. It's a it's a winner. Yeah. Uh, oh, this one actually did get a. Uh, this one did get a release date. Hold on. Uh, Top Racer Collection. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Excited about it. I think this is in March now. Um yeah, March seventh. I love I played so much Top Gear and Top Gear 2 on Super Nintendo, it was ridiculous. And you know, these are the games that uh Horizon Chase is directly based off of. In fact, there is uh unique Horizon Chase content in this, and I don't really understand what it is, but I'm excited about it. Uh and I also never put any time into Top Gear three thousand. So yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, excited to give that a proper go because that was that was a late Super Nintendo game, so I never picked it up, and then it became expensive, I think, and I just never, just never did it. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about Top Racer Collection. I'm excited about Euphoria Two. I still don't understand exactly what it is. Is it a remake <laughs> of the first game? Is it a sequel? Uh, it's very strange. Sunsoft hasn't exactly been. Um, Oh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Clarifying, for, not, yeah. not necessarily for. They're saying a lot of things. Uh, they they don't seem to have the greatest grip on the English language, and <laughs> I think I think it's pretty amusing that they're just not even really trying. They're just like, we're just gonna we're gonna do our best, and you parse this out. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. Good, <laughs> Godspeed to you. Um, I really like the original Euphoria, and I am very excited to play a new version of it. I think this new one looks really cute. Um, and then I just have one left, and I'm 90% sure it's coming out this year. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have any kind of actual date, but this is one of the highest ones on my list is Anton Blast. I think that game looks incredible. Yep, uh, that is uh, Penn's number one game of the year. She has been playing. There, there was a, a Steam thing that they yeah. put out. Uh, she's been playing that nonstop. Um, she is so fucking excited. She got really upset that we couldn't just pick up and fly out to Seattle for PAX West because Anton Blast was like doing a thing out there. And I was like, we can't just fucking go. Like, it's not a thing we could do. Seattle or Portland or wherever the fuck it was. She was like, oh, we'll just we'll go get some plane tickets. I was like, oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> we'll just fucking hop right on that. Yeah, I take right care of that with all the money I don't have. Yeah, exactly. No. The yeah, uh, Anton Blast looks fucking That looks so great. fucking cool. I am it looks so, so into cool. this game. I'm very yeah. excited about it. I am uh I am super interested in that one as well. The uh the last one that I have, um I'm I'm really, really excited for this. Uh and it, it features artwork from a friend of the show, guest on the show, uh Steve Gregson, who who does the uh or who's doing the, the ninja uh right. baseball Batman comic uh -huh. stuff, the Toxic Crusaders beat em up. Toxic Crusaders, yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Like what a weird ass property. To be get, I mean, we're also getting a Killer Clowns from Outer Space game this year, so like, I guess it's not that weird. 
that both of these are coming out. If if you're going to come out with one, you might as well come out with the other in the same year. But this looks really fucking cool. This looks really great. I love a good beat 'em up. Retro wear does good work. Um, yeah, I'm fucking into uh, more beat 'em ups. Sold. Yeah, keep that train. Keep that train a, a rolling, a moving, a chug yeah. a chug a choo chooing. I mean, they're, they're are great. Beat 'em ups are great. They're a lot of fun to play. Like it's four player co op. What me and the family like? We will sit down and we will play this together. It'll be awesome. I I'm very excited. I fucking I love you, this trauma shit. More, I want more beat 'em ups based on uh, kids cartoon properties based on movies that they never <laughs> should have been turned into kids cartoons. Just a hundred percent not. So, like, you know, let's let's have the uh, the RoboCop cartoon as a oh yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. God, I don't I'm know what sure I can't. There's sure there's. Other I was ones just going to say I of. cannot think of any other examples at the God, moment was there because an I'm very cartoon? tired. I'm, I'm sure there was. Or was it just a? I know there I'm was sure a toy was. line. There had to have been. Uh, 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 uh. Let's get some Exo Squad going on there, huh? <laughs> I want Fuck a hyper yeah, violent dude. widget. The World Watcher beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, give me a fucking beat him up based on like the Snorks or something like that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Snorks versus Snurfs. Well, I just said Smorks versus Snurfs. I was going to let it go. Smurfs. I was no I was going to say anything about it. That um what what's crazy about that is we just went through this whole list um which took longer than I thought it was going to. And this is again like we say this every year, this is just the stuff we know about today. We're recording on January 12th. That does not include all the shit that they're going to be like and you can buy it right now like there's going to be so much other shit that comes yeah. out this year. We haven't had it's, any Nintendo Directs yet. Like, no Nintendo we Directs. Might get a, we might get a Switch 2 announcement this year. Like, I, I do think we're going to. I do think this is... It's it's time. It ju- it, it's time. Like, there's still life left in the Switch, but it's time. It's time for a successor. I would not be year. surprised if we got a, uh, a PS5 Pro announcement as well i don't know about xbox if they're going to do like a pro version or if they're just going to go multi-platform and like uh, officially announce games passes on everything um but it feels like it's about time for that man fuck you i really hope hollow knight silk song is this year i really fucking hope it is (sighs) well we're just going to continue to hope and say that that is our show. All it's, right. Because it's tomorrow and it's time to go to bed. That is our <laughs> show. Join us next time for the 10, 20, 30, 40. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to say probably. It's the final episode before episode 500. So I don't know. We might do something stupid, but I think we finally have a grip on what we want to do for 500. So yeah. uh, we just got to go make it work. That. Yeah. Did we talk about. Um, we did not the cartoon thing. We did not. We did not. Okay. Um, so I, I think we should mention this now to give people time to jump in for our first episode of the cartoon thing. Right? All right. Does that seem seem fair. Did we come up with a good name for the cartoon thing, or are we just calling it the cartoon it, thing for now? I want to call it the Stone Age Gamer Cartoon Express because okay, I that's right. Yes, the, the USA Cartoon Express. Yep. Uh, all right. So uh, Dan had this fantastic idea. Uh, this is all him, and he should be damn proud of himself. Uh, <laughs> so we we've run out of starter kits, and we need to find we needed to find a new monthly thing to replace the starter kits with, and we are replacing it with the Stone Age Gamer Cartoon Express, which is every month we're going to pick a random uh, old video game cartoon. And we're going to watch it. We'll announce it on the show. And then we will talk about it on the show. Uh, it's everything going from 
uh, like the old Pac-Man cartoons all the way up to the weird Canadian CG Donkey Kong Country, but nothing past <laughs> that. Um, yeah. So not I... none of the new Sonic stuff, not not exactly. Pac-Man, the Ghostly Adventures, which was actually a really good show. Um, you know, like old shit. Yeah. So Evan's actually not on right now to pick the random episode, and I didn't put together a um. I didn't put together the the, the playlist yet to have Plex pick us a random episode yet. Oh, that's um, all right. We'll we'll announce yeah. the episode next week. Yeah, we'll announce exactly what the episode is next week. I did think it might be kind of amusing to start specifically with the Bubsy pilot. <laughs> um, uh, we'll see. Knock that one out of the park. But yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll do a little bit more discussing in the not too distant future and get that sussed out. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're going to be doing um, once a month. The uh, Strange Gamer Cartoon Express. I'm very excited about this. Uh, because these shows are all ta- terrible, and they deserve to be discussed. They do. And, but <laughs> And that's kind great. of the point, though, is that we're not watching them specifically to make fun of them. We're going to watch it like I, we want to take this, like, objectively. I haven't seen most of this shit, if we're being honest. Um, and what I have seen, I haven't seen in 20 fucking years, you know? This will be great. Yeah, I'm it's really been excited quite a about while it since I've watched a lot of this stuff. So, and there is also a lot of it that I haven't seen. So, yeah, I'm 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 pretty jazzed about it my own self. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. All right. With that, that is our show. I accidentally closed the script. There it is. Uh, yeah. There we go. Um. There it is. We're on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. If you'd like to get early access to this show's episodes, as well as a bevy of other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network, check out our Patreon, also linked to in the show notes. It helps keep this show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated. This show's theme song, Square Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. I'd really thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That is it. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games.